What is up guys, it is Nick, and we are back to break down this atrocious Thursday slate. So, <laughs> we've got the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets, which there is a picture going around of free tickets to this game in the upper section, so you leave it, live in, leave, if you live in Cleveland, you can get some free tickets to this atrocious game tomorrow night. Huh, can we just, can we just get on to Sunday night's game or, or Monday night? Who are the Steelers even playing on Monday night? I just know their plan. It's Patriots-Lions on Sunday night, which I'm going to. I almost said the wrong date for that for a game I'm attending. We will definitely be breaking both of those showdown slates down because this cannot be the only showdown slate I break down this week. But hold on, let me take a look. Who are the Steelers playing? I just know they're playing. Oh, Steelers. Steelers Bucks. Ryan Fitz Magic on Monday. Oh, Ryan Fitz Magic on Monday Night Football. Who oh, baby. But back to the back to the topic at hand. We have the Jets and the Browns. Let's be honest here. Every team we have we have to be fair. So every team gets a primetime game. So guess what? We get the Browns and the Jets on on Thursday night football. The Jets have already had two primetime games. So have the Lions after this week. Can we we got to we got to get on with this and get get out of here with these garbage teams on primetime games. I mean, oh, I don't even know if I'm going to watch this game in in uh in uh being with full disclosure here, I did research this slate kind of I will not be playing any dollar amount on this slate. I'll be playing the Thursday through Monday, but I'm not betting money on, you know, Tyrod Taylor, Jarvis Landry, and Quincy Anunua. I, I just don't, I just, I, ugh, I just can't sit down and tilt this game with real money on the line. But, did the research, so let me share it with you. So we're going to start out here on DraftKings. Got the captain spot and the five flex spots. We'll start it off with the obvious. We'll talk about a little cash games, a little GPP. So first, cash games, lock in Tyrod Taylor. He's got the floor rushing. He's got the passing. Uh, passing. He's His floor comes from his rushing, but, you know, he can pass for a touchdown. And for that purpose, you're gonna, I'm going to lock in his number one target. That's Jarvis Landry at 10-8. Leaves us 5,600 left. Landry had a little bit of a down game last week. Uh, just five receptions for 69 yards. Did still see the seven targets, uh, but it was a little bit of a different game against New Orleans, and let's they never trailed. They could also never trail here, but Jarvis Landry, I'm putting him in my lineup. He should see, I would say, eight, nine targets in this game, which is plenty. I'm going to pair Tyrod Taylor up with one more target. You're going to see people go to Callaway because they saw the one game, the 47-yard touchdown from Tyrod. If you remove that one touchdown, he had two catches for, what is that, 34 yards? 34 yards. He had two two catches for 34 yards if, uh, if Tyrod doesn't find him there. I like Njoku. He's been seeing a lot of targets, seven targets, seven targets. Eventually, he's going to catch a ball that's longer than eight yards. So, I take David Njoku. He's only 4,600, has not seen the price bump. Actually, a guy I'm considering on the Thursday through Monday slate. Full transparency, I am considering him on the Thursday through Monday slate uh, because of price, but uh, not sure I will end up going there. But that is a really fair price, and... It's not like the Jets are studly again on defense against anybody. So, David and Joku, forty six hundred, really good price. Brings our average remaining salary up. Next, you always want to get. This kind of just depends on who you are and what you think the game is and what you think the game flow is. But in cash games, you should always one hundred percent always have either a defense or a kicker. I, I don't care. What week it is, I don't care if there's a guy down here like, say, Sh Sharon Peak was just massive chalk and we had to play Sharon Peak because he was in such a great spot and you had $600 value. You should still play a kicker or a defense 
They're some of the safest floors you can get for cash games, and the kickers have some really nice upside. For this week, I'm going to go ahead and take the Browns defense. Um, I'm not a huge fan of either of these kickers. So with that being said, I'm going to take the Browns defense. We do have Greg Joseph as the Cleveland kicker now. Um, it's Cleveland. I'm not trusting their kicker. So we're taking the Browns defense at 4K. Brings us up to $7,050 remaining. And uh, that means we can lock in one of two options. So Quincy and Nunwa is one option. The other option is Sam Darnold. Darnold probably has a safer floor because he's a quarterback, but Quincy Nunwa provides an interesting value, I think. Um, he's 10K. I don't think many people will pay up for him, but he's seen 10 and 11 targets. Clearly, clearly, clearly Darnold's favorite target. Uh, and so I think at 9-8, he is plenty viable but in cash games I think I take the uh the Sam Darnold take the safety leaves us 4100 left and I think it's a pretty easy play down here either go with a kicker or a defense either play the Jets defense or you play one of these kickers or you play Richard Higgins or Ty Terrell Pryor it's some it's one of these guys right here my lean my lean is um is with one of the kickers. I think I think it's Jason Myers is the one I would take. Um, he's kicked two field goals in both games. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Point is, is I think I would take Jason Myers in cash, but there is viability to Pryor. If you believe in the revenge game narrative, you can go Pryor. But he did see eight targets last week, uh, which is a fair amount. And Rashard Higgins did not see the price bump of Callaway, but saw three more targets caught two more balls, um, and didn't have a touchdown. He also fumbled, which cost him a point. Um, and so I do really like Richard Higgins, but uh, for the sake of this cash game, we'll just plug in Jason Myers. Let's clear this, and we'll talk a little GPPs. I don't like the quarterbacks in this game all that much. Uh, so I do, I, do like, uh, I do like the prospects of going with the Browns defense at captain, not at flex. Go to captain. Go to captain. Brown's defense at flex. It gives you 8,800. And if you put in my boy Njoku, I still like him for GPPs. It gives you 9,8 for the rest of your team, which means you can go Anunwa, Landry, Tyrod, and then like hope for the big play out of Robbie Anderson type thing right there. Hope he catches a, a bomb from uh, Darnold. Um, there are a lot of ways to go, but I do like fading the quarterbacks in the captain spot for these slates, especially with two teams that aren't very good. You can also do the Jets defense. Another option at captain would be to go David Njoku. He's 6,900, and then throw in the, like, uh, throw in the Browns defense there, and it leaves you 9-7 for your remaining players. Um... It's kind of just a little bit of preference, but I don't this week particularly like Tyrod or Darnold at the captain spot. So I'll take I'll take Njoku or the Browns defense probably if I play, if I were to play GPPs on this slate. Moving on over to FanDuel, we've got uh, we've got the captain we got the MVP slot over here, but it doesn't actually cost you any more. They're the same price. So over here. I like the prospects of Tyrod in the captain spot just because he doesn't cost you any extra. And Njoku is, is cheap over here at 9K. He helps boost it up. Um, you got the kickers over here. I don't believe you have the defenses on, on FanDuel. I don't actually play these slates all that much on FanDuel. Yeah, you just have the kickers, which Jason Myers is actually not like a cheap price over here. So over here, I like the prospects. Uh, you can pretty much lock in whoever you want. Like it's only five people opposed to the six, and uh, six thousand. Their uh, six thousand is their min price. So you can't actually lock in everybody you like, but you can go Tyrod and Joku, run it back with a Nunwa, and then just find a value down here that you really like, like uh, like Rich Oh, not no no no. Is there? They actually do a better job of pricing over here on FanDuel. So you can't run it back with everybody you love, but 
you can have a three-man stack and then go with Jason Myers, the kicker, and Robbie Anderson. Something like that. You can run it back with that. I prefer the run it, running it back with players over here. Uh, and over on FanDuel, I much prefer the quarterbacks and top option receivers. Uh, Jarvis Landry isn't my favorite guy on FanDuel because it's half point PPR. So uh, maybe the guy, maybe a guy like Robbie Anderson who can catch a deep ball, uh, it, it is a nice play at MVP. Um, but you're not really restricted over here, um, as long as you throw in, you know, and Joku and maybe like a Rashard Higgins. You've got 14-5 for your remaining players. If you want to play a Nunwa and Darnold, you can with Jarvis Landry, something like that. It's pretty easy on FanDuel to just find your favorite find your favorite uh, players. Like Njoku is one of my favorite players on the slate, and I really do like Rashard Higgins. They're probably two of my favorite FanDuel plays. So if you just lock those two into the flex... So, if you lock those two in the flex, and Joku, Rashard Higgins, because Callaway is 9 5, Higgins is 7 5 over here. If you lock those two in, why did I put them in the MVP spot? Put them in the flex. Oh my gosh. Okay, whatever. It gives you 14 5 at every other position. Okay, just assume Higgins isn't in the flex. I don't know why it's putting him in, in, in the MVP slot. But point being, it gives you 14-5. You can pretty much get almost any combination up here that you want, except for, like, Tyrod Darnold and Landry. But you can go Tyrod Darnold and, like, Carlos Hyde, who's been seeing all the work at running back, pretty much. Um, so there's plenty of creative ways to go on FanDuel if you can find a couple of cheap core plays that you like. Um, if I had my... If I played more on FanDuel, I pretty much just play FanDuel to play another site for the heck of it, because... I don't know. I play like 40 bucks every week and I just withdraw the profit from the week, pretty much. Like, I played $50 this last week and I won, I think I won like uh, to 102 and then I withdrew down to 47. I just don't care about FanDuel that much. But point being is I research for FanDuel, so I might as well throw a couple bucks at it, withdraw 50 bucks every week or something like that. But that is going to do it, guys. That's going to do it for the showdown slate. We'll be back. Uh, I don't know when I'll, maybe... Maybe Sunday I'll just do both videos for the showdown slates. I, I'm going to heavily research the Patriots one because I'm going to the game. I want to have action on that game, so I will have that heavily researched. So we'll see. I'll figure it out, and then I'll hit you guys with the videos for uh, those two showdown slates. This won't be an every week thing where I do all three showdown slates, but I will do probably the Thursday one every week and probably maybe the Sunday. I don't know. It depends on what the games are. I didn't have a video for today, hence why I'm doing this video. But like I said, I'm not playing any money on this slate. I don't like this slate. But let me stop rambling on, as I always do at the end of these videos. And I will catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.